Hi, I'm Matt with Appliancevideo.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the drain pump on this Whirlpool freestanding ice maker. Stop. Before beginning any repair, always be sure to disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for proper voltage. Remember to also turn off the water. You will need the following tools before you begin this repair. A T20 Torx driver and a quarter inch nut driver. A defective drain pump will typically terminate operation of the unit. If the water level sensor senses that the water has risen in the pan too high or it's not draining the water out, the water sensor detects it and will basically terminate operation to prevent the unit from flooding. Um, when you get there, you basically can just manually put it into test mode and operate the drain pump. And if the drain pump is not operating, you want to verify that it's getting power. And if the pump's getting power and not pumping the water out, then you'd have to replace the pump. And to begin the repair, we're going to go ahead and open the door, get access to the interior components. Now we've removed the ice bin door just for video purposes, but the next step we're going to take here is removing the two quarter inch screws for the cutting grid cover. And then you can just go ahead and grab the cover and pull it off. To remove the cutting grid, we're going to first disconnect the Molex connector here. And then we're going to remove the two quarter inch screws that are holding the bracket in place. Now with the screws removed, you can just go ahead and slide the grid right out. Just want to be careful that you're not going to catch on your bin thermostat wiring that's on the side of the cabinet here. The first step is removing the water slide assembly. This step is not completely necessary. We're just going to take this step just to gain a little bit of extra clearance. Once the screws are removed, just go ahead and pull the reservoir out. The next step is going to be removing the quarter inch screw holding the recirculating pump cover on. Now we can just go ahead and pull the cover off. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the water reservoir. This step is optional, but it does just give you a little bit more room to work. Just have these little finger tabs on each side here.
And once those are removed, you're gonna go ahead and disconnect your pump harness. Pull the tray out. All right, so to remove the drain pump from the water tank here, we're gonna start by removing the torque screw that's on this metal mounting bracket here. Go ahead and just take the bracket off. Now the pump itself uh, is kind of like a twist lock. Now you're gonna just grab the pump and just rotate it about a quarter of a turn. Just pull straight out. And you see it's got the two locking tabs here. And it basically has to slide out between these two gaps on the housing cover and then your new pump this one has the plunger still kind of stuck in there you can go ahead and pull that out and this also has the little rubber grommet that's still stuck in there from the the pump you're gonna have to go ahead and press that out because your new pump is gonna come with everything Okay, now that you got your new drain pump, you're gonna go ahead and install it. Now you got your two ears, one on each side, that are gonna correspond with the two gaps right here. And you're gonna basically just press it straight in. You may have to work it a little bit side to side to get that gasket to properly drop down and seat. See what's happening here. As this O ring, when I'm trying to press it in, not wanting to go. So there's a little bit of grease that's still left inside here. You can take a little bit of that grease and just kind of grease up that O ring. Now you're just gonna go ahead and rotate it. And you want your harness going back towards the tubes. And we're gonna go ahead and just set it up right. We're going to put the bracket back on. and then reinstall your torque screw. And now we're ready to reinstall the assembly. Now we're ready to reinstall the water reservoir. And just kind of bring it down underneath here. Bring your harness up the back. And go ahead and hook that up. And then just swing the tank back up into position here. Reinstall our wing nut screws
take the recirculating pump cover, slide it up inside. You got your two tracks here that it's going to slide into. And the slots on the side here. Go ahead and install your quarter inch screw. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our reservoir water slide. Next, we'll reinstall the cutting grid. Next, we'll reinstall the cutting grid. Gonna basically put it up in the track. You wanna just be careful of your bin thermistor harness and the evaporator thermistor harness. You wanna make sure that it's not gonna catch on either of those. Slide it up in there. And we can go ahead and install the connector. And we're gonna go ahead and put our two quarter inch screws in on each side. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the grid cutter cover. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our cutting grid cover. Just wanna make sure that your wire here doesn't get pinched. And that will complete the repair on the Whirlpool Freestanding Ice Maker. Thank you for watching another quality video brought to you by Appliancevideo.com.